Yeah, hello everybody. Um, I would like to thank the conveners of the session for inviting me to give this presentation. Um, I'll give you an, an overview on an, and an update uh, on our research uh, activities in the Eastern Sea of Marmara region. And uh, over the years, there have been a number of uh, co-workers and colleagues invited, which I can't really name here all, but you see them in the list. And uh, so without any further ado, I would like to, to jump um, in the presentation. And uh, so this is the outline. I'll focus on seismicity distribution, stress fit variations, slip transients uh, in relation to seismic moment release and foreshock sequences uh, in the Sea of Marmara region of the North Anatolian Fault. And uh, let me uh, make the point here that the research uh, I present is uh, mainly based on a uh, long-term observatory, the GONAF observatory that we have uh, uh, implemented uh, in the Eastern Sea of Marmara region, together with uh, colleagues from Turkey, from Afat, and, and uh, also from US uh, colleagues from UNAFCO. Um, and one of the key objectives of GONAV is uh, to decipher the driving physical processes along the Marmara seismic gap prior, and then eventually also during and after uh, the pending uh, large earthquake in the region. Um, a few words on the motivation. Um, there are a number of figures and facts that clearly define this region uh, to be uh, of high seismic hazard and risk because of the co-location of an overdue fault segment capable of generating an, an M magnitude up to 7.4 earthquake um, and the uh, Istanbul uh, metropolitan region with 15 plus million inhabitants. And so, um, Intense uh, research effort uh, is obvious, is needed uh, to better quantify the seismic hazard and risk in this region. And in one of the uh, uh, steps, uh, we have compiled a, a unique seismic, a unified seismic network for the reason based on the, um, yeah, basically two separately existing nationwide seismic networks and uh, a number of uh, newly deployed stations and, and near fault networks and based on a consistent um, processing scheme, which I don't uh, have time to go into detail here, um, we came up uh, with a consistent seismicity catalog uh, covering a decade between 2006 and 2016 um, with about 12,000 events. Uh, about half of them uh, uh, were relocated and uh, Still, um, uh, there is a leak of near fault stations uh, due to absence of islands along most part of the fault that runs offshore between um, the 1912 Garnos rupture in the west and the 99 Eastmid rupture in the east. Now, one of the uh, 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 points that we focused on um, is the stress field in this region. And uh, it's widely known that the region generally is in a transtensional setting. Um, and there are two uh, contradicting uh, tectonic models or seismic tectonic models, uh, one stating uh, that a larger uh, future earthquake will be um, one strike slip event along uh, the so-called main Marmara fault, while the other model uh, postulates that there would be a number of smaller uh, on echelon normal faulting events. And both models are based on the same uh, multi-channel seismic data set. Now, to contribute to this discussion, um, we have uh, performed an, a stress inversion uh, to, uh, based on the catalog I've shown you, uh, inverting directly first motion polarities, which means uh, we can also use uh, uh, recordings from data where we do not get a stable standalone focal mechanism. And the upshot is that basically um, we can confirm a transtensional setting, however, with clear local variations uh, between strike slip and normal faulting stress regimes. Um, SHMAX uh, is consistently uh, about uh, trending about 110 degree east, um, while uh, the uh, local, locally preferred uh, tectonic or the faulting regime uh, differs between a normal uh, transtensional and strike slip faulting. Um, 
so we then also use this uh, catalog uh, to image uh, the seismic activity along the fault. And what you see on the upper left is the main Marmara section uh, that hosts most of the deformation running in our, uh, more or less uh, along the northern shore of the Sea of Marmara. Um, and the secondary branch um, shows less seismicity. And then these two uh, uh, segments here are the Princess Island segment just south of Istanbul and further south the Yalova Hasek segment. So um, we do identify uh, aseismic patches and these are important because they indicate potential uh, potentially locked uh, segments and these might then turn into high slip segments uh, during activation as we know from the recent uh, Izmit earthquake in 99. So they are important to better characterize uh, the ongoing deformation along the fault. Regarding the thickness of the seismogenic layer, um, this is more or less consistent with about 15 to 18 kilometer along the fault. And this uh, would allow them to get a better est estimate of the uh, area or the, the uh, rupture surface that would be activated in a large earthquake. Let me move on uh, towards uh, a key observable, which is uh, to identify whether the fault uh, or the individual fault segments are uh, locked or creeping. And to do so, uh, we performed a systematic research for earthquake repeaters. And uh, in fact, we found uh, two pairs of magnitude uh, 2.7 uh, repeating earthquakes and the criteria that we applied uh, were pretty strict and that we cross correlated the entire wave trains from before p until uh, two times s minus p after p um, with a rather broad bandpass filter and then a pairwise correlation of all event pairs at each station and a repeater was identified if the cross correlation coefficient was larger than 0.9 at the minimum of two stations and if the repeaters were at least 30 days uh, apart uh, to exclude seismicity bursts and, and swarm type activity. Um, as I mentioned, we did identify uh, two repeater pairs. Uh, here uh, are the waveforms uh, from two of those, uh, clearly highly similar uh, cross correlation coefficient 0.97 uh, in the lower part here, this is the uh, uh, zoom part of the P wave. And so uh, these two re repeater pairs are located uh, towards the western part. And so the, the upshot here would be that the western Marmara segment partially creeps. Um, slip rate uh, or creep rate is difficult to estimate because this would be based on one recurrence interval only. But uh, if we would use that, uh, we would come up with a, a creeping rate between 25 and 75%. Moving further to the east, um, uh, the colleagues from Geomar in Kiel in Germany uh, have deployed a, a seafloor-based uh, uh, network uh, to monitor um, deformation on the seafloor across the fault, and they actually observed no strain across the main fault branch. And adding to that information that this segment is seismically almost inactive and we did not find any repeaters, um, the conclusion would be that the central marmor segment uh, is likely locked. Now moving um, uh, further to the east, um, actually to the focus region um, of our observatory uh, due to the proximity of the fault and, and the metropolitan region of Istanbul. Um, there we installed seven vertical arrays equipped with different types of uh, short period seismic sensors and then additional uh, instrumentation at the surface. And I, here I want to make the point that in four additional co-located boreholes we installed GONAF uh, borehole stray meters. These are the same stray meters that are used in, in for example, in PBO, the frame of Earth scope. Um, and so this is to, an, to, to widen the frequency band uh, of deformation um, to observe the full uh, bandwidth of deformation along this part of uh, the fault. Um, now for the northern part, um, the Princess Island segment, we can state that this segment is very likely uh, locked based uh, on the observation of an aseismic patch 
um, about 30 kilometers long, 10 kilometers deep. This aseismic patch uh, seems to be uh, constant in time based on the uh, long-term query catalog, which is, of course, somewhat lower resolution. Still, uh, the gap here or the aseismic patch is pretty clear. And then adding uh, the fact that we did not identify any seismic repeater, and, and then information from GPS allows us to conclude that the Princess Island segment offshore Istanbul is likely locked and has to be considered as a high slip patch and a potential nucleation point for the pending Marmara earthquake. Um, now, I mentioned that we had installed or have installed uh, borehole strain meters, and these uh, allowed us to make a pretty interesting uh, observation of interaction between slow slip and seismic deformation, um, in that we observed uh, a large strain signal with an amplitude on the order of several micro strains. So this is clearly a an, an large strain signal. And uh, so this uh, signal was lasting for about two months and occurred uh, together with a clear maximum in a local seismic moment release. Uh, and this, of course, is, is based on, on, or was calculated based on a local seismicity only. And this indicated somehow that there seems to be um, a coexistence of slow slip and, and uh, seismic energy release. Um, we used that data um, to calculate the strain tensor and the horizontal strain tensor actually shows a 20 degree rotation um, in the frame of this two months uh, with a back rotation within about 16 months. And this is pretty interesting because uh, this is uh, by now frequently observed in the frame of large earthquakes that induce a co-seismic rotation of the stress tensor that rotates then back within weeks or months. So this clearly is a thing we will follow up um, and, and investigate further. Um, finally, um, very recently, based on a, on a new local network, the SmartNet on the Amutlu Peninsula, we, we observed a long-lasting um, micro-seismicity uh, framing a 4.5 earthquake. And uh, that is interesting because uh, at the same time, we again observed a slow, sip, slow slip signal here, which is shown here. Um, again, suggesting uh, that uh, transient slow slip occurs in the frame of enhanced local seismic moment release, um, and thus uh, indicating the coexistence and the interaction of seismic and aseismic deformation in the Eastern Sea of Mamma region. And uh, if we uh, continue to observe these kinds of signals, we're pretty optimistic that we can use this uh, towards improved um, earthquake forecasting systems in best case uh, in conjunction uh, with uh, the systematic observation of foreshocks. And that is the last point. And uh, since I'm running out of time, I will touch on this very briefly. Um, so we now have uh, a couple of examples in this region uh, that uh, larger, moderate or larger events are systematically preceded by foreshocks. Um, that could, of course, help us to extend warning time, uh, complementing the classical uh, earthquake early warning system offshore Istanbul, which is, of course, critical uh, to, towards uh, uh, protecting um, the local population uh, from seismic risk. So these are my conclusions. I basically mentioned all the points already. And so with that, I would like to conclude my talk. Thank you for your attention and I'm happy to take any question. Thank you.